Nick, you can't see Emma's breast, can you? No, I'm reading a document about coronavirus. Uh, he's reading a document about coronavirus, which, <laughs> okay. is, which is basically like breasts for him. <laughs> this is the gay equivalent of breasts, yeah. <laughs> it's the gay equivalent of breasts. <laughs> PhDs. <laughs> I had a bit of a dubious curry before. Oh. It was, like, it was a curry I made. Um... Full of marijuana. No. Dubious. Oh, I see where you're going there. Yeah. Nice. I made this um, curry on Friday, and then I it was still in the fridge, and it was a good curry, so I, I decided to eat it again. Mm-hmm. And I'm just waiting to see if it's going to be okay with the old It's a, uh, within a week. All. That's fine. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I anyway. eat curries across probably five days very regularly. My dad yeah. would eat curries up to eight days. Uh, well, that's the thing. That's where I'm getting it from. So my parents, they'll eat, they'll eat pasta that's been sitting out, not even refrigerated for three days. Yeah, see, that, and that's how I grew. That's up. That's illegal. Yeah, that shouldn't but happen. It's a, it's illegal. Yeah, but that's how I grew up, and so I think it's given me a quite a good like a quite a healthy immune system now your gut floor so i feel like i can resilient. eat anything yeah yeah but uh it feels well, okay what kind of curry are we talking there uh it was a beef vindaloo that i made okay okay so yeah. that, i think you know v- if it was bit chicken, of vinegar in there if it was chicken you might go okay one week on chicken mm, okay possibly yeah. beef you're fine no one's ever got sick from cows that's what I was thinking. Um, I appreciate you saying that. I did a bit of Googling as well, and I was like, some are saying like two days, any more than two days, you're fucked. I'm like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, so another one, it was <laughs> like two weeks, you're fucked. That's like when, you know, like all of the milk cartons, they have to say an expiry date for your milk, which is like mm. a week earlier than it's actually going to go off. Um, I think yeah. it's the same for like all of those websites, like don't eat food when it's gone green. Okay, we'll just scrape the green bit off. Yeah. And it isn't, milk's all pasteurized anyway, so it doesn't, it's like, steri- like you can't really get that sick from milk anyway. I don't know if I believe that, but you're sure. Yeah. Nah. Just because they cleaned like, it once doesn't mean it can't get dirty again. That's very true. <laughs> Boy, do I know life. that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, did you have a good Christmas break? I did. Gosh, has it really not been, okay, yeah, pre-Christmas. Um yeah, I did. I had a good Christmas. Um, you know, it was a little bit weird because I wasn't home, <laughs> but it was, it was very weird. It was. It was just from home's perspective. Yeah, <laughs> home felt different to you as well, did it? <laughs> yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, my Christmas, my first Christmas event was a lunch. Casey and I were at my house, and we skyped in, skyped in to the family in Melbourne. Which was nice. It was, you know, we'd present presents and cards and things, and we opened them on the on the call. That's as good a substitute as you can hope for in these slightly weird times. But it's it's not quite the same. Did you get anything good? Uh, yes, I got some AirPods from KC. I got some running shoes from my parents. Uh, my sister running shoes. Yeah. My sister got us a voucher for a restaurant here in Christchurch, which is nice. Did you ask for the running shoes? Yeah. Right. Why cool. is that? What? Why is that? No, I just, I just, my parents just gave me a very weird gift this year, and I'm just trying to gauge. Okay, so this question was mostly so that I'd ask you what you got. No, I've been. I mean, I mean, usually when I ask you a question, it's so that it can lead Come into back something to you. that I can yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. But this is also. Hey, Michael, what did you interest. get for Christmas? No, don't. I, I had it. It was fine. Um, so my parents got me a wok. A wok. A wok. I think that's a lovely gift. Sure, except it was a very small wok. Oh, <laughs> and okay. And I've already got two woks, and they're a bit okay. normal size. Um, and usually they give me like some cash in an envelope, like literally every year since I was like like nine a drug or deal, something. yeah, yeah, like a, like a drug deal. Usually some drugs as well. Um, <laughs> And this year I just got a walk and I thought it was like my mum's been not, I'm not going to slag off my mum, but my mum has been known to, oh, you know, this firsthand re gift, uh, presents, you know, that she gets, she's a teacher. She gets a lot of gifts 
and I famously you regifted to you yeah. that, something that my mum regifted to me. Uh huh. Um, and it was it, that was expired, was expired chocolates at a work yeah. party almost ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, without that, would we have a conversation podcast? we Don't never know. had. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, got a walk. Don't know what to do with it now. Don't know if I should just sell so it. So you're, Don't know if I should just... you're not walking on sunshine. That was a stretch. There's so many closer <laughs> routes. Okay. Of okay. What, 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 are the, what are the other options here? Oh, you've got. Um... You're between a walk and a hard place. That's better. That's very That's good, better. actually. Okay. That's I should very have good. thought. Should have Locked thought it a little in. longer. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, you got sneakers. I mean, yeah. I don't know. That's that's great. But I asked for that. That's it, good. I they're expensive, and y- you know you need to replace them every year. Sneakers. Yeah. In fact, some my I think technically you're meant to replace them every six months. What? Yeah, they wear out. Yeah, this is just something dentists tell you so that you <laughs> keep buying toothbrushes. <laughs> No, I you know, I think you can look at the bottom of them and when the tread's not there anymore, you should probably replace it. How often are you wearing sneakers? Are you wearing them every day? Do you have multiple pairs of shoes? No, I have one pair of sneakers and I would and wear it pretty regularly. But like I would probably walk or run 60K a week. So when you do the maths, like it's fairly, fairly substantial. Six, fucking slip in a brag there. 60K a week. Yeah, 50 or 60, probably. Are you serious? Well, you have been sending me your runs, so... Yeah, no, I am serious. I I walk, I run. It's. It, I think you'd be surprised how much you walk. Anyway, particularly now you have a new job where you're outside and walking around places, presumably. I think you'd be very well, surprised. I, I keep track of my steps. I'm a big step Okay, guy. so you could, you could easily calculate your week's steps into kilometers and work out exactly how far you travel well it wouldn't be 60k i'm probably walking about may i'm probably averaging ten thousand steps a day sure and what's like ten thousand over steps? seven day it's like 200 meters like five, maybe a, 200 meters a kilometer it's, it's like ten thousand steps is maybe 10 kilometers uh eight kilometers between four and five miles Four miles, seven eight seven kilometers, is yes yeah, six and a half to eight kilometers a day. So if you if you're going six k's a day, right? So times seven days. Day. Oh yeah, six k's a day. Six k's a day times seven is forty two k's. Forty eight days. If you're doing mm-hmm. eight kilometers a day, it's even more. You know, like you're. You're easily in that range of 50k a week. You just don't even realize okay. it. Well, it just sounded like a lot. Anyway, um, Christmas. Keep telling me about Christmas, and I'll just keep interrupting you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what it was, so that was lunch. Then I had like a bit of a quiet afternoon. I finished off cooking a, or prepping a trifle for dinner. And then I had... Um, I had dinner with Casey's parents, which was the first time that I had met met the parents uh, almost a year into things, which uh, I honestly didn't ever know if it would happen, um, just for various family dynamic reasons. But it did, and it was actually pretty pretty palatable, and, and they were nice, and I got them a little gift, and they got me a little gift. So what did you get them? I gave them some chocolates. Not the chocolates that I gave. No, I didn't re-give them. No, those went in the bin. <laughs> that would have been that would have been cool if you did. Yeah, that How would have they been. Get you? I got a little cologne. Oh, I don't know if David they, Beckham. they thought I just smelled or something, but you don't have you. I never noticed that you smelled nice or bad. Well, people tend to think I smell quite nice. I think. Do you ever wear cologne? All the time, every day. What was the cologne that they gave you? Who was the celebrity? Uh, it says Paris Hilton, but I assume that that's just a rebrand. No, that's. Does it smell like lollies? <laughs> it smells like bubble gum. No, nice. it's quite fresh. No, it's a uh, Versace Eau Fresh. Oh, that's, I hear that's good. That one. Yeah. Um. Cool. And then what'd you do for New Year's? Well, I just finished that thread and say that uh, after that we then went round and hung out with Sean and 
uh, Ben and Fee and Chloe and uh, just had sort of like the friends miss substitute for um, what now we used to Sean... do at Dan and your sort of family yeah. all together. Um, so that was a nice kind good. of replacement. Um, now, some did Santa sort of give Sean some time off from the working at the North Pole? Because of the ears thing, because of the he's an elf. I don't know. I'm not. I've okay. never even met him. I can't really make jokes. <laughs> okay. I did it once, and it was I, such you know. a it was such a long walk there that I yeah. I missed it. I I've lost my um my touchstones of elf ears, and I just wasn't there for you. I'm sorry. Yes. Well, I haven't. I probably shouldn't be making those jokes, considering I've never met him. I'm yeah. just jumping on a bandwagon. You're jumping on a bandwagon. I mean, he he started the bandwagon, to be honest. Well, he's just getting in before everyone else does. Really, he's <laughs> yeah, isn't he? Um, so yes. And then New Year's uh, was meant to be, as I previously mentioned, the stargazing in Tekapur at the end of our oh, yeah. road trip. Unfortunately, it was fucking cloudy. So we... I was waiting for this Saturn Jupiter. I know. All fucking... Oh. Well, <laughs> since I heard about it two weeks ago. Yeah. And nothing. Yeah. So we got a refund. We can go back and try again, which is good. But we just ended up spending it in the Airbnb. Well, that's, I'm sure you're in a nice kind of surroundings there, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. What about you? Um, just the usual shit went home for Christmas to Adelaide, and um, it was really nice, actually. Just spent a lot of time. Basically didn't see anyone else apart from my family, mm. but I hadn't seen any of those guys for a year or so. Yeah, that's reasonable, so, I think, in the circumstances. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't really, didn't really want to. I did, I did, um, I did meet Odie and Katie's lovely little lady. Very exciting. She was, uh, she was great. She kept uh, giving me weird looks and slapping my face, which is not unlike most, most of the women you meet. women in yeah. my life. Um, but she was very cute and it was great to see those guys. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just a, a night after night of drinking. Until 5 a.m. at least. Like, not even kidding. Every night, drinking till 5 a.m., waking up super hungover, pushing through, waking up at 11, and then started drinking again. I, bought, I brought over a Santa, like I bought, I brought that um, Santa outfit that I, that I got from, um, for, for the podcast. I brought it down. I had limited, I had like seven kilos <laughs> of, of baggage. Bag space. Carry on. And I was like, Throw that in there. Um, so I whipped that out a few times. It was just drunken, boozy Santa again, which mm-hmm. is uh, no one really enjoyed, I think. Um, and then New Year's, we just we had some people around at our place for um, for some drinks. So pretty and, chill then, because you yeah. you were going back and you were, like we talked about you were sort of feeling like this was going to be your last time in the house, right? Like this was the nostalgic farewell to a. A, a childhood oh. home that was going to be sold. Did that, did, it, did you get that sort of catharsis? Yeah, I did actually. I forgot about, forgot about that. Yeah, um, that was definitely on on my mind that uh, that my parents are going to sell their place. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a sad one. I don't really want to think about that one because hmm. I don't know what they're gonna. I don't know what they're gonna do. I don't know if they. I mean, they they're both retired now. Oh, so they're both they're retired. Gonna, yeah, dad just decided to retire, you know, um, at the last minute mm. this year. Mm. So they're both retired. They're just going to, I have a feeling they're going to pack up and move to Queensland because they've got a, they've just got a place down there. So they might not have any home uh, to come back to at Christmas next year. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, I'm sure dad will put you up. Dad. Oh yeah. Well, I'll sleep in his bed for sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Welcome but, to Deep uh, Forward, everybody. Uh, so nice to be back. 2021. What can go wrong? Uh, it's it's a pleasure to see comforting faces in a time of turmoil. Sitting through the internet with me, Michael. How you doing today? I'm I'm, I'm very well, thanks, Nick. Lovely to have <laughs> to have me. <laughs> Why did you make that weird? I nailed the first time. You know I did. Oh, uh, I'm Nick. Hey, sorry. Hi. Whoa, hey. Um, yeah, it's weird times. Do you feel weird? I feel weird. Yeah, today was super weird. It was waking up 
to literally watching the fall of an empire, basically. That's what it felt like. Yeah. And, like, in real time as well. Previously, these kind of what felt like historical moments, you would get the end of day summation, right? Or you'd see the newspaper article the next day. I don't yeah. think there has been, in Western politics at least, a moment of slow motion crisis like this where it was covered every step of the way, where there was multiple angles, multiple news networks, multiple social media platforms and things. In fact, social media was often causing um, some of the scandal as well. Trump's tweets were its own sort of side story here and the the way that those platforms were censoring him eventually when uh, they determined it was inciting, (laughs) like, violence. It was it was playing out in front of us in a way that I found hypnotic and terrifying and uh, compulsive viewing. Yeah, I felt like I mean, just the timing of it was great in a sense that we I, I work woke up you know like six thirty seven a.m. and it seemed like you know usually you wake up when things happen in the U.S. and they kind of backdate like three or four or five hours yeah and it's my the alerts that I, that was coming up on my news feed were like half an hour ago at, at most yeah so we're waking up to it immediately switch on the news and it's like just unfolding and it's like it's pretty it's like thrilling in a way but yeah it's also a really i don't know what the word is but it's like it's kind of like watching a car crash i guess is what it is it's like entertaining but you just hope that no one's hurt <laughs> Yeah, but we know that there were at least four people at this point have died as a result of the the storming yeah. of the Capitol today. Um, no. One one woman who was a rioter, uh, I don't even know what we call them, an insurgent um, herself got shot and died as a result of yeah. storming this place. Like, it's, it is, I, I want to say bizarre. It is bizarre in a in an objective standpoint, but it's also entirely predictable. Like this is where it was going <laughs> for the past yeah. four years. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh. So I want to, I want to get your take on this because I've had multiple discussions today about where this is coming from and what the supporters of Donald Trump are really thinking. Now I'm of the view that the people that are out there, they genuinely feel that the election has been stolen. Now they are being, they're, they're basically in a cult. The cult leader is de- either deluded or an egomaniac or both, or is deluded because he's an egomaniac. Now he's come, he, now he's spouting out untruths uh, like it's gospel. His disciples, his followers are eating that shit up because they truly believe you know, that he is the, uh, you know, the, the, the leader that they deserve, their saviour. So they actually they actually believe that the election's been stolen. Now, their reaction to storming... Now, if you saw this happen in Brazil, if you saw an election actually being stolen in a country where, and no offence to our Brazilian listeners, uh, but if you saw this happen in a country that this might conceivably happen in i like uh by that i mean s- the someone stealing an election it might be a v- valid reaction do you agree with that like it might be a valid reaction to storm uh the if there were legitimate offices. grounds if, of of, yeah, that's all of electoral theft yeah yeah i mean it depends I, I i wouldn't advocate violence but no you know i think that you're right that there are some contexts where it's like okay if a million people turned out in the streets in you know the um what was it the uh Hong Kong or the irani uprising the the what is it the spring what is it the irani spring oh, what's fuck what's that arab, arab, arab spring? spring yeah it's like if if you turn out in the streets to through sheer weight of numbers convince a corrupt leader that their tenure is over and that they need to right. um you know vacate the office because the, the yes. people have turned against them right like there there is a definite precedent to that kind of work um yeah good previously. analogy that one. 
But yeah, and and so let just let me finish that thought. So their reaction there, in some ways, if they truly believed that that's what's happened, is kind of understandable. Now the thing is, they are completely have been completely misled. There is no grounds for this. So that's why that's what makes this just the a completely bizarre situation. They are being told lies, and now Don is Donald Trump. Here's my other question to you: Is Donald Trump? He's basically he can't accept defeat. I don't think he truly believes uh, that the election's been stolen. It was kind of illustrated in that phone call with the Georgia representative, where he basically yeah. asked him to find more votes. Yeah. So the he's secretary he's just of state. I think. Yeah. So yeah. So he's just Trump is basically just asking them to find a way for him to win this game. So this is all trickling down. From one very powerful man's ego. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the, me your take on that. the other thing there as well is that... Oh, my thought just disappeared. Um, <laughs> You're still oh, thinking about it. that's so annoying. <laughs> yeah, I am. I that's so annoying. Because <laughs> I, uh, I had a point that I was holding on to while you were making your... You're starting your next um, oh, sorry. point. I did it again. And I lost it. Ah, uh, Fuck. It will come back. It will. I, I know that. I know that it will, and it will feel so good. Yeah, it'll, it'll feel be... like losing your wallet, and then you, you know, <laughs> and then you find your wallet again. You're like, oh my god! Oh, and it has five dollars in it. Didn't I have more in this? Um, <laughs> the... <laughs> that was a deep, deep joke. I like that one. So, what was your question again? I'm sorry. It all so... came down from the ego of Trump, is what you're saying. Uh, that was that was a point I made. I wanted to hear, yeah. So, what do you what what's your take on this on, on the supporters, like on, on what they're what they're believing and why they're believing it? So, it know, was dogmatically. I mean, the 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 crazy thing about it all is, as you say, it all comes from Trump, and yet because of this uh, like cultural time, right? It is accentuated fears in a certain section of the American people and force them into this sort of position where they feel like the only thing they can do is go and act, right? Um, the going and storming a building um, it is a strange choice that when you say when... Oh, that was what my point was going to be, is that there was... It was too late, Right, like there was actually past the point at which, in the legal system of America, anything that they did could overturn the election. Right, that the 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 votes had been cast, the electors had been decided, it was done. All that was happening was the final rubber stamp on this decision. But because they were in so deep in this uh, like cultish mentality about the state of the world, the state of reality. They believed that there was something to be achieved from it. But that's the ultimate irony of all this, right? Is that they did so much. They fucking killed people. People died from this storming the thing. Trump incited an attack and it couldn't work. That was the bizarre thing. Like you could storm, you know, the Arab uprising or whatever, Arab Spring. You could go into the streets and turn out in your millions and force a change of leadership. If it happened in Brazil... You know, you you could see a, a change, but th that's just not the way that the American system works. It was done. Biden was president elect, and nothing that anyone did today was going to change it. And that's the ultimate bizarro thing for me is that it was futile. It wasn't. It couldn't work. So all it was was like a tantrum. It was just the the last angry flailing of a losing side that refused to accept it definitely uh, but breaking it down to individuals they don't view themselves as people who are throwing a tantrum they do they believe that they can do so like that that their march can do something and by storming the capital they can achieve something is that what they believe or are they just well i don't i, I don't know stupid. what they believe i don't know what they believe i i don't even know that there was a clear what was the purpose? Like, what yeah. ha what were they trying to do is is the question. What were they trying to achieve by going in, 
right? Yeah. They they took over, but then when they got in, like half of it just seemed like, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bad analogy. Photos. But exactly, it's a bad analogy. But it's like the uh, the Dark Knight. The Joker says like I'm a dog ch- chasing after the post man you know like i wouldn't know what to do if i caught it like you right. see them get into this office and what are they doing they're like sitting behind the the podium and taking photos or they're just like climbing on stuff or doing basic <laughs> like civil like they took they tossed the papers in nancy pelosi's office and put their shoes up on her desk and left a note like I, well, it feels like what was the point what were you trying to do i don't like yeah. it's intimidation it is desecration of the rule of law it is desecration of normalcy and democracy but there wasn't an achievable goal it was simply acting out it was like a toddler throwing a tantrum and mm. i don't i don't know what the outcome was and i don't know how individual people justified it to themselves other than the president said we will walk on Pennsylvania Avenue and and you know over to the Capitol building and show them that we won't give in. Yeah, and that's the thing. Trump without a doubt incited this unquestionably. Right. Yeah. It, it was his fault. It was. But then like again as entirely predictable. He said I'll be walking there with you and then he just went home and <laughs> watched it on TV. Like yeah. it was it, uh, it was it was explicit from him, and then he just sat back and watched it happen. Yeah, because he's a, he's he's a weak man at the end of the day. Like yeah. he's extremely powerful in a superficial sense, but he is such a weak man, and everyone knows that. But the question is as well because now the narrative came out from today. There was coverage of people saying that Trump is basically a broken man, like completely fixated on his loss, refusing to accept it, can't think on anything else. Like the other news that came out of today was good news. The Democrats now control the Senate. They earned those two Democratic seats in Georgia, hold a 50-50 tie, and now Kamala Harris can can uh, break those ties and ensure the Democratic um, agenda is possible. Um, that's yeah. incredible news. It is three tiers of government now controlled by the Democrats. Um, but the... Uh, oh, God, my brain is just mushed today, apparently, because my threads are, are not connecting. Um, I had a thought, too, and I think I forgot it as well. We're this not doing good. well. This is we're rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys it just was... forget what they were going to say <laughs> call it, and call it a day. <laughs> so... In that context, you know, it was a good day for Democrats, but there was all this concern about what is Trump doing? Where's Trump's mind at? And the, the groundswell of people saying, like, he has completely lost it. He's absolutely just out of control. He's not governing. He's not interested in running the country. He's fucking not doing anything about the pandemic. The number of people now from inside the Trump White House who are starting to resign, I mean, fucking cowards to do it so... <laughs> At this, this was the point it took for you to, to decide you didn't want to work there. But um, all of these people saying he's unstable, uh, to the point where Pence was the one managing the situation in the Capitol. He was the one I think who ultimately called, called guard, in the guard, yeah. because yeah. Trump didn't. And at that point, when the vice president is making those calls, it is a one hundred percent valid uh, line of inquiry to look into the 25th Amendment and remove someone who doesn't have the mental faculties to manage the responsibilities of the office. Uh, can I just add, at this the, the morning, so the US is going into their evening now. So in their morning, which would have been our, you know, probably midnight, Yeah. Um, Trump tweeted putting pressure on Mike Pence to overturn election results yeah and basically and it was actively i mean he, he in, the, in the campaign rally yesterday he was like Trump, you know pence is a great guy um but if he doesn't come through with me i'm not gonna like I him like as much him. as i do <laughs> and he basically echoed that in their morning yesterday yeah and Tr- and pence obviously has no power to well maybe he does but he's 
in in the, in his statement, he he, does, he doesn't he, have the power to do anything other than just like rubber stamp this process. It's done. It's not his. He doesn't have right. the constitutional ability to do anything. And that was that was a point. That would have been the point where yesterday morning for the, for the Americans, where Trump and Pence split. Yeah, I think it was a clear clear point. And then you've got Trump basically rushing off to his bunker or wherever he was. Pence calling in the armed guard, and also Pence. I don't know if you saw this. They're still in. They're still in. Um, they're still in court now, doing the rubber stamping Not of the electoral yeah, college. Back in the Capitol, and yeah. Trump. Uh, Pence is the guy doing that, by the way. He's yeah. the one leading that. Yeah, it's still on. You could watch it now. Yeah, and so Pence is the one having to deal with all all this stuff. And by the way, with, with that process, you've still got there are still states that are objecting yeah. um, it, to votes being passed, insanity. which. Doesn't Absolutely. do anything, like, but it just basically they're at. I think they're at two a.m. There probably now. It's way they're going to be there yeah, yeah. until six a.m. Yeah, at least. The um the the crazy thing as well is that Pence had to be escorted out of the Capitol into a secure location because mm. the president incited his own party to storm the Capitol and take out. You know, and threaten effectively his own vice president. It is fucking crazy shit. It is like there were improvised explosive devices detonated on the site because people brought bombs. People were shot. Four people died. And it all happened because Trump couldn't accept it. Like, this is the level of insanity. That's that's where I was touching on earlier. Like, if there are no consequences of this, if they do not either oust him because of the 25th Amendment and say, you're not fit for office, you are just not mentally capable, or impeach him again because it was an act of sedition, then there's just, there's nothing stopping this from just spiraling and spiraling out of control. If you don't, absolutely 100 percent root out people that acted this way and arrest them lock them up deter them from ever doing this again then there is no lesson learned and the next time will be way worse the next time when there's a disagreement about actual legal procedure it will end in dozens of lives lost it'll be so much more scary and this was not a. It's not. There was plenty to be scared of today. Is anyway. Yeah, uh, and one thing, another thing that irked me today was just these Republican um, leaders coming out and condemning the violence. Ted Cruz yeah. and fucking yeah. McConnell. I mean, these guys are to blame for this as well. These power hungry careerist motherfuckers. Uh, they 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 are disgusting. They supported Trump. They don't even... They, they, they're the worst kind of people. They're worse than the people that really believed in Trump because they clearly don't agree with Trump, but they thought it was they better for their themselves, career and right? for the better like, for their support base if they just sucked it up. And then it gets to a point where... Yeah, I, yeah ironically, it takes for the, the fucking paper, the writers to and looters to make it into their office for them to condemn it that's yeah. when they condemn it you know when when they <laughs> when they're actually in their office then they're like okay this is this is too much fuck you you yeah. didn't call it out before you're you're weak and they they should be out they should they should fucking resign they're not going to but they 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 swine i hate these guys slimy motherfuckers it's 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 very true though cuz half of them when donald trump was just a mere uh, candidate for presidency, candidate for the nomination of the Republican Party, all of them came out. You know, I think Lindsey Graham said that, like, if Donald Trump be- became the uh, Republican nominee, uh, the Republican Party would be destroyed and they would deserve it. You know, like, they, they've they all said these things. Ted Cruz had famously denounced Trump and then came around to lick his boots, you know, like, they all Ted just Cruz decided... Ted Cruz wants to be president one day. Yeah. So, and he... He thinks in his head that Donald Trump's base is so, as a base that he doesn't want to lose when he runs for president again. Yeah. So he's trying to stay. He's trying to like sit on the fence or kind of you know err on the side of caution there. 
Yeah. But it's, it's just it, weird. I, I just, yeah. I don't think it's going to work either because he, this, this, it requires a certain kind of despot charisma, right? And Cruz doesn't have it. Cruz couldn't actually take the Trump um, supporters because he doesn't have that kind of insane TV yeah. personality weird magnetism whatever that trumpism <laughs> thing is which gets cult members to sign up cruz isn't it he, he's not gonna win <laughs> the hearts of those people Boring as fuck. the devotion of those yeah. people it's um it's a losing battle but yeah i i just it was fascinating and terrifying and there was a whole lot of doom scrolling today of like all of these uh, things happening and I, I just like i said if if nancy pelosi doesn't start an impeachment hearing if someone doesn't put forward the 25th amendment and try to get him out because honest to god trump has no limits he has there's no level to which he will not sink well that's the thing like what is he going to do now like he's been banned from the president of the united states has been banned from twitter he's basically shown all of his hand the whole world knows now He's 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 basically embarrassed. Uh, he's he's clearly incited violence against his own members of his own party. Yeah, he's his pants are down now. How does he then? I mean, he'll find a way, no doubt. But then, how, how does he come back from this and then, you know, finish the rest of his presidency over the last you know two or three weeks? How does he possibly do that? Yeah, fifteen days, two weeks. He 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 won't. That's the thing. Like it, it, he just he's not interested in it. <laughs> he hasn't the been interested is, in it forever. I'm just baffled. I mean, maybe I I I see a different side of Ivanka than you do. But <laughs> Ivanka, I'm I'm kind of baffled by Ivanka. Like she seems, I swear she's like way more switched on than the other members of that family. She sees more. Or maybe she just has she can have that appearance, but I'm just thinking like, what does what does she think? Like, what does she actually just believe her dad, or is she just she just doesn't want to be written out the out of the will at this point? Yeah, just opportunists, like Don and fucking Eric. You know, they're, they're kind of stupid, dumb dogs. <laughs> yeah, but Ivanka seems like the smart one there. I, I mean, I, I the most interesting people in that family to me are the kids. Not that not the not the forty year old, but like Baron and um, what's the girl Tiffany? Tiffany, like oh, they yeah. are teenagers, right? They're not in control of their lives. They're just caught up in this circus, not responsible for it, but then going to grow up ar- surrounded by literal psychopaths. Uh, what what do they think? What are their lives? Do they know? Do they hate him? Well, Do we they haven't love seen him? Baron since the inauguration, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> is that true? I haven't, I haven't seen him. <laughs> I haven't okay, seen Baron. if you haven't seen him, no one's and seen him. And Tiffany Baron. is a um, whatever you call people who leave the church, like a heretic, name? a descendant. No, that's just a word. Uh, dissident. Uh, dissident. Yes. Someone who leaves like uh, Scientology. Right. Uh, um, I know the word you're trying to say, but I can't think of it. Just uh, insert it in post. The word was apostate. Apostate. I don't, I don't know where my brain is today, but it's it's all over the place. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, that's how I usually feel. So, um, If you had to predict what happens on Inauguration Day, 20th of January, Donald Trump... Seeing what happened today, I, I mean, previously, I think our hypothesis had been Trump is going to play the hero, say, well, I'm leaving, but I'm a, a real hero because it was stolen from me and it's not um, a legitimate election, but I'm going to go anyway and then I'll be back or something like that. That was sort of the hypothesis. I think so far that's sort of played out. He has been very much insistent that he did not lose. But if you had to cast a your mind ahead two weeks. How do you think that changeover day is going to play now? Do you think there's going to be oh, violence man, at hope... the inauguration ceremony? I would love there to be violence. No, you wouldn't. It... No, 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 no. Let me... I don't mean like amongst the people. 
I meant like amongst the Trump family. Like I would love <laughs> just to see, you know, the helicopters, like this, the news helicopters circling the White House. And then you just got that kind of pan shot from a, way up above of, of, I don't know, whoever would arrest Trump. And they just bring him out in handcuffs and uh, that would be beautiful. Um, but it's probably a little too cinematic. Um, uh, it is like at the same time, there have it's, been It's within today, arm's reach. It's it is within, within it is so close. Cl- it is closer than it we're has ever been. We're the closest we've ever been to that. To, uh, the, <laughs> there are, um, there has already been coverage of um, the Georgia, I think, Attorney General, perhaps saying that she has prepped legal action against Trump for his electoral interference and calling and insisting on the fraudulent votes, right? That's Mm. a state level um, uh, crime that can be prosecuted. And the moment that he loses the presidency, he becomes vulnerable to that stuff. It is not impossible that one day after he gets arrested. Well, that's the thing. So the normal process is there'll be the inauguration ceremony, which, so if we take last year, by the way, how great does Obama look for, I mean, he would have had to hand over to Trump. And I mean, it was written all over her and Michelle's, his and Michelle's faces. But I remember watching that ceremony and they, they were like, Okay, shaking the hands of Trump and Melania and just going, this is our what duty. the yeah. fuck are we doing? Like, they could almost hear them muttering under their breath to each other, like, yeah. we're going to give it to these fucking lunatics. What or the Hillary fuck? there, as she was there at the ceremony as well, watching it happen. Still a good sport. Yeah. Hated every minute of it, but yeah. still a good sport. So, I, what I think is going to happen, either two things are going to happen, I think. Uh, so, I think... On the day, so Trump won't turn up to the inauguration ceremony. He'll instead hold a rally at the same time, which I think there's been talk of already. So he'll hold a rally at the same time um, and basically campaign for 2024. Mm. Or, and this is this could be another cool thing that happens. Like either way, it's going to be a great season finale. Uh, or as Jimmy Kimmel is calling it, a treason finale. Um, <laughs> Pretty good. Or he goes to he goes to Mar-a-Lago like tonight and just says, "Fuck it, I'm not coming back." Yeah. Oh God, it's all very plausible, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> I think you're right. right. I don't I mean, think he'll be there. I think I think because the no, Scottish like Prime that. Minister has already said you can't come to our golf resort in uh, Scotland because the borders are closed, even for you. You're not coming mm. in, which is an absurd thing that a foreign head of state has to say. But yes, but also um, he apparently Melania has uh, done some renovations at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, did you hear about this? And no. Trump is and not impressed, not impressed at all. And he's like, M- apparently Melania has done all these renovations at Mar-a-Lago to his private quarters, and he absolutely hated it. And demand he like hit the roof and demanded that they all rip it down. Ugh. So maybe he's got no place to go. Maybe he'll go back to New York. And then Unlikely. Have him no one either. likes him. Yeah. No, but his name's written all over shit. <laughs> I think that the works. other, before we move on from this topic, that the other thing that needs to be pointed out, even though that we can't really offer much more that hasn't already been said, but the 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 manner of the police and the way they handled a literal insurgent like flood of of people into a government building versus the mm. way they treated protesters needs some commentary, right? Like the, the BLM protesters. The, yeah, yeah. Like they, they were, you know, ramming cars into people, macing peaceful protesters who are on the street, like all this kind of stuff. And yet they yeah. were the ones who moved the barriers aside to let the flood of, like uh, insurgents into the building they were meant to protect. They're walking around taking, they were taking selfies. selfies. They're taking selfies. They're taking selfies with people. Well, they were helping so them down the stairs on the way up. They arrested thirteen people. Thirteen people of like wow. an actual <laughs> insurrection takeover of 
what should be, you'd think, one of the most secure buildings in the country. And they yeah. just let him waltz in, vandalize the place, and they did nothing. They well, did the ob- nothing. The obvious answer here is that um, that a certain percentage of law enforcement agree with the sentiment of the rioters and the yeah. terrorists or whatever they are. Uh, and they, they feel that as well. And so they, I mean, they feel like they'd be fighting against their own people. So they will stop and take a selfie with them and they will be a little bit more lenient. Yeah. Whereas with the BLM protests, they felt, you know, the same they were the people target. would, yeah. They, yeah. they would feel like it's us versus them. So yeah. they, 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 you can imagine that they're in some way trying to communicate with the other side that, hey, 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 we're one of you two, you know? Well, that was there was also that from the White House. People were at the White House were speaking with the, like, QAnon base and, and, and communicating. Like, uh, it's all, yeah, as you say, very much uh, obvious the, the uh, political beliefs of, of the people in charge. But um, it also just hammers home the point that they don't need to be, like, macing people and shooting tear gas at people in in these peaceful process protests earlier in the year it didn't need to happen that was a choice they could have restrained themselves because they restrained themselves today that was an ideological choice good point yeah yeah that that, that, uh, really exemplified that today didn't it yeah (laughs) that they it was the the violence was completely on the side of the uh of the rioters and the the people loot uh, whatever they were are they called yeah. are they terrorists are we call them I terrorists yeah they're terrorists yeah absolutely it was the violence was on their side and not a, a necessarily a result of a clash with law enforcement yeah which indicates that law enforcement is part of the problem in these situations potentially yeah anyway so let me let me can ask you just one more question sure. How, have we witnessed just the fall of the Republican Party, and if so, do they just what do they do now? That they reform, they they go back to base and and draw up a new Republican Party. Does the Republican Party split, or is this the fall of America? I think there will be a schism. Whether or not it's a fall of America depends really on how hard the Democrats um, retaliate, and retaliate is feels. Um, the word retaliate often implies undue um, recourse, yeah. but I just mean like holding to account in the way that the expectation of the law um, and, and, and the expectation of the people under the law, basically. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. These people aren't going anywhere. These Trump supporters are not just going to slowly become Democrats. I mean, they're still... They're just underneath festering. There, mm. there is has been though this top tier political commentary sort of opinion where uh, all these you know people who were so hyperbolic about the uh, the Trump presidency, he's not a fascist. Like this is just a normal president. When he goes into office, you know the systems will work and they'll hold him to account and there'll be safeguards and stop stop this absurd panicking about the possible consequences of it. There's been this sort of conservative political commentary voice saying that Trump is just another part of the the norm, right? He's he's just a regular conservative with none of the political nous. But uh, I think that at this point it is patently obvious that he has taken the reins of this party and steered it in a completely different direction. And some of those people today, some of those media voices who've been denouncing people for their fears in the past few years have finally said, hmm, this doesn't seem normal. Hmm, Was there any way that we could have seen this coming? And I don't know where those classic conservatives, if you like, who believe in the rule of law with a degree of integrity and have as a result stepped away from the Republican party as embodied by the Trumps. I don't know what they become because Mm. 
Some of them will have voted Democratic to stop Trump this time, but definitely not all of them. A whole bunch of them would have just stayed home. But if the Trump party continues being the Trump party, then I don't know how the Republicans who disagree with him form a, a third a third area. Like I don't, I don't, I don't think that the American system has space for a third party. So I don't know what happens to the traditional conservatives left behind by Trumpism. Yeah, yeah, it's just difficult to. It just definitely, it feels like it. It feels like a split at the moment. It feels like a a a decisive split in the Republican Party at the moment. Yep, it's the it's the more moderates. Uh, versus not versus but and the um ultra conservative slash alt right yeah and that and that's that's where the that's where the split seems to be and it almost feels like the more moderate republicans have way more in common with uh democrats absolutely. than they do with the alt right absolutely so how can they call themselves part of themselves part of the same team when they well, are closer to the left? Particularly when you see the degree of craven behavior from the leaders in the Republican Party. You know, Ted Cruz is now an alt right Republican, right? He, he, Josh Hawley, uh, Josh Hawley, I think Josh Hawley was his name. I can't remember his first name. Senator Hawley, um, who voted against the. Um, the counting of the uh, electoral votes. He he is in an alternate reality, crazy pants Republican Party. I don't know where those people go. I, I just I I fail to see how anyone who does care for historical constitutional law finds them an adequate representative. I, I it's I just. It is going to be a fascinating devolution. The other, the other weird thing as well is, as you say, they're alt right. What, what is the QAnon kind of sphere going to do? Like <laughs> all of this QAnon narrative for the past four years, like Donald Trump is this mastermind who's you know unraveling international pedophile rings and stopping the corrupt Democrats and all this, that, and the other. What does this narrative become now? <laughs> What happens That's now so when he leaves office? It's like, well, Donald Trump wasn't the guy. Whoa. Do these people wake up one day and say, "Huh, maybe this wasn't real," or do they just double down on the like delusion? I hadn't thought about that. Fucking losers, man! <laughs> it's so funny to think that they just don't know what to do now. Their whole fucking narrative is busted. Yeah, this like oh, I just know. be patient. This is all part of the plan. Kevin Spacey is going to be the new leader. <laughs> uh, it's going to the, the Republicans over the next four years, at the very least, they're going to have to really cook something up and decide who they want to be, and then try and implement some change within their party. Otherwise, they're going to be a la- They're going to continue to be a laughing stock. Yeah. I mean, they have no sway at all. The most satisfying part of today was knowing that Mitch McConnell is now the minority leader of the Senate and he can go fuck himself and just fuck off. It's very satisfying. The leader of minorities. The leader <laughs> of minorities, Mitch McConnell. Um, that That is some degree of satisfaction. Um, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. Do we have some? Um, what are you, do you want to end? Should we end on a bright, bright note? I mean, that wasn't necessarily. No, it was. It's a not a downer times. for me. It's, it's just, it's just interesting point yeah. in history, isn't it? Well, I can tell you one thing that was cool that happened this week. My television show came out. Good grief has hit the airwaves. It is on TV and Z on demand after three and a bit years. Our show is out. People watched it. It is a free beast in New Zealand. And hopefully, stop asking me. It's gonna. We, we'd like to get it in Australia. I promise I'll tell you when it comes to Australia. It's not out in Australia. I'm sorry, it's not out in Australia. Please stop asking me. I really I want mean, it to be out. I want to support you here, buddy. But, I know. Uh, I don't know. I don't... I mean... You can't do yeah, anything was... about it yet. That's okay. I mean, I, 
all I can say is that I haven't seen it yet. Was I promised a bootleg copy? Yes, I was. Did I receive one? No. <laughs> no do I still want to support you? Yes, I do. But, but slightly uh, less I haven't than seen it. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. I mean, what if I see it? Uh, God forbid, it's terrible. And then I've, you know, I've, I've publicly put my name on Facebook to something that's terrible. I mean, I'd be an Look embarrassment. The, the embarrassment. Imagine if that happened. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> I need to see it. First. You know, the great thing is, is I, I no longer. Good. I assume it's good. I, I no longer need your gratification because I have other external third parties now who can gratify me. Oh, don't say that. Oh, I do <laughs> really want you to see it, though. <laughs> um, Who else is gratifying you? Uh, many, many people. Um, uh, Taika Waititi. Uh, Taika Waititi w- liked one of our clips. That was or something? Fucking was, oh, you like surreal. Your new That's yeah. cool. Um, yeah, our show came out. It's been... It's just, just been really nice. I had a little viewing party with a few friends. Um, came around and binged the series on Monday night when it came out. You that was re- really fun. As a group. Yeah, twelve of us watched watched for an hour and a half. Watched the whole season. Oh yeah, yeah it was it was. Did, were there some laughs? Did there were some, some laughs. Honest react. What, was, what, was, what did you? What was the honest gauge that you got from people? Like you have to sift through a little bit of, you know, uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna show you that they like it. But what was the gauge? What was the honest gauge that you got from your friends? People genuinely liked it. I think I, you know, like you're right. Obviously, it's a little bit weird to be like watching a thing that someone made with the person who made it, but it's very hard to fake a believable laugh, right? Like, no. particularly like an hour and a bit in. Like, if you're laughing at that point, you're laughing because you like it, right? And I feel like you you know if they're telling you like like kind of insightful, they have got they've got insightful um, comments or you know, yeah, um, even criticisms or whatever. Yeah, that's how you know that they're really. You know, giving you the good stuff. Yeah, and then beyond that, the surreal thing was like, okay, it's front page of TVNZ. If you go to tvnz.co.nz, it's like the showcase show. It's right there. It's sitting there for anyone who goes there to go watch. I've heard. Did I VPN this? No, I, I mean, don't... I, I don't know that people have had much success with it. You can give it is a go. TV, TVNZ a subscriber thing, or is it? Like no, a, it's like free. A, it's like iView. It's, it's free. Like the ABC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I so then a VPN. Then I've seen um, just like random feedback. So Grace, one of the stars and co-creators and writers with me, she's been getting a whole bunch of people uh, tagging her in the show, obviously, and Eve as well, because they're the stars as they watch it. And so I've just been seeing positive feedback trickling in from legitimate strangers, people I don't know, people who've got no connection. Um just posting things that they find funny, hearing, seeing them watch, like record an Instagram story where they're watching a clip they found funny and then laughing to it at the end. And it's just that 10 little seconds where it's like they saw a funny joke and then you hear the... (laughs) And it cuts. Like, that's just a legit reaction. It's very... It's a very egotistical thing to have done, but I've been devouring it all week. Just all Ah. of the... Jumping on, you know, the funders. Nice little bath. Yeah. Yeah, jumping on the funders page, New Zealand on Air where they posted, oh, this is live now, and then seeing just random people on Facebook post, I loved it, I devoured it all in once, you know, like this uh, is the funniest show I've seen in forever, blah, blah, blah. What? It just, like, it's I, I, it's That's very gratifying. I, oh. I can't say it any other way. I'm getting some ricochet gratification over yeah. here. It's, That's it's, great, man. Congratulations to you and the uh, the ladies. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> can, can, can I take the... <laughs> <laughs> please, please let me take that again. Okay, you can do, please can do let it. Please let me take that again. Everyone, just just scrap, scrap that from the work and, and uh, starting again. Congratulations to um. No, that sounds even weirder. Congratulations to you and the uh, and ladies. The <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I did ladies. That. So weird. Yeah. Leave that all in. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, now congratulations. That must feel so good. I'm, I'm proud of you. I can't wait to see it. Thank you. Yes, I hope. I hope we can find it. Um, we can shop it around and find an Australian distributor. So you're not having to wait too long. EasyTV.net. Uh, Check it out. Well, uh, thank you for joining us in what has become a very exciting dramatic 2021 i don't know why we expected anything to change 
Um, but here we are and things are not back to normal. Um, so if you want to return to days in which none of this was happening, please jump back into the old podcast feed, pick us, pick an older episode. You see what else is out there. You know, you might've missed a few. There's some good stuff there. Um, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on SoundCloud. If you want to relive those Christmas Carol memories, um, please jump on and, and, and re re listen. Uh, you can send us your questions and comments to deepford at gmail.com and we'll be sure to answer them in a mailbag segment at some point. And you can always rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts and that'll help us uh, climb up the algorithmic ladder. Thank you very much and good night. <laughs> wait, Nick, there's oh, wait. still a bit more of the show. There's still some more to do. <laughs> How about a science news? Play the jingle. It's that time. Time for science news. We're back from the jingle, and that was fun. Um, there's, there's a lot of this before you do the science. Is Weird amount of hot dudes walking past my house right now. Take I've a seen photo. Like three hot dudes. Is it Both? because it's a warm day over there and they're not wearing shirts? No, they're all wearing shirts. It's just like I just saw three really kind of good-looking buff dudes, and I'm like, I was going to say, Whoa. what's your definition of a hot guy? Are you, are you talking uh, muscular? I think I a weird type. No, I don't like a huge muscly guy. I like a like a you know like a nice arm. Uh, <laughs> You know, a bit of you got to look at the legs. You got to you uh-huh. don't want like a skinny leg. Yeah, and like you want to you want to make sure that they're not skipping leg day. Uh-huh. But uh, you also don't want to know that you they're not they're not obsessed with the gym. That's not all they do. They just you know hit sure. it two or three times a week. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, a couple of handsome, handsome uh, hunks to change out there. Well, good for you. Um. That's science yeah. news, everybody. Thanks for tuning. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm going to try with basically brain mush and at 10 o'clock at night to talk about what is potentially the oh, yeah. most in-depth science news article I've ever tried to summarize on this um, I love that we podcast. leave the, the most dense part of the show to the end. <laughs> we left it <laughs> way late, having previously demonstrated how little brain function I actually have left. I also, and you can vouch for this, spent 10 minutes at the start of this podcast just going through and highlighting all of the various parts of this thing, which is 40 pages long in the PDF that I saved. So, But don't let that, don't don't let let that, that scare don't you let off. That scare you off. This is, Nick's this condensed is, that 40 pages into, <laughs> into real nice pages. little science sound bites, guys. <laughs> Don't worry okay. about that. This is going to be a fun segment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I have already regret this. Um, okay, here we go. This is a story that was in the New York Magazine, the Intelligence uh, um, column, very good for in-depth reads and explains. It is an in-depth, highly researched, highly thought out, hypothetical or exploration of the question, where did coronavirus come from? Which, a year I- on now... Love that this is the science news, by the way. You do? You're on board? Yep, I'm so on board. Okay. Do we know where this thing came from? And is it a valid question to ask? Was it made in a lab? Early on in the uh, coronavirus pandemic, this question floated up to the surface and was dismissed as a somewhat racist uh Quest, line of questioning it was uh considered inappropriate to think that this was a china virus the wuhan virus right it it, it came across in a in a context where the uh narrative had become it was most likely natural it had most likely come apart from a bat they they seemed pretty confident it was a bat but possibly a pangolin or something like that uh, coronaviruses interacting, mutating together, and then crossing over into humans. That was the narrative to suggest otherwise had consequences. Now, with a bit of time, with a bit of distance, and with the impacts <laughs> very much um, 
out of control in some respects uh the question has come up again yeah. and so this is an article it is it is huge i've put it in the um chapter title i recommend reading it i know it's it's a big one but it's very simply written and it'll take you maybe 20 25 minutes but it goes through step by step all of the logic behind this question so the article is called the lab leak hypothesis and it's by Nicholson Baker. Um, the subhead is, uh, for decades, scientists have been hot wiring viruses in hopes of preventing a pandemic, not causing one. But what if... Dot, dot, dot. So he begins it like this. This is his hypothetical. What happened was fairly simple, I've come to believe. It was an accident. A virus spent some time in a laboratory and eventually it got out. SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, began its existence inside a bat... Then it learned how to infect people in a claustrophobic mine shaft, and then it was made more infectious in one or more laboratories, perhaps as part of a sp- scientist's well-intentioned but risky effort to create a broad-spectrum vaccine. SARS-2 was not designed as a biological weapon, but it was, I think, designed. Many thoughtful people dismiss this notion, and they may be right. They sincerely believe that the coronavirus arose naturally, zoonotically, from animals, without having been previously studied or hybridized or sluiced sluiced through cell cultures or otherwise worked on by trained professionals. There is no direct evidence for these zoonotic possibilities, just as there is no direct evidence for an experimental mishap. No written confession, no incriminating notebook, no official accident report. So that is his hypothesis. The position he takes methodically across the course of this article is explaining the various reasons in which he thinks it might have actually been bred. And one of those is the vast amounts of um, money that has been invested into labs in what they call gain-of-function experiments. Gain-of-function experiments is the idea that you take a virus, which you know, you get it out of a bat or something like that, you then bombard it with other tissues, other um, flesh from different species, and you then try and let this virus mutate and grow more powerful as a way of testing the real and present danger to human health and then potentially preventing it with a vaccine. So gain-of-function experiments is actively investing money into making viruses worse so as to theoretically then be better prepared should something break out. The counter-argument against this has always been, well, if you are making a worse virus, what happens if it gets out? And the premise of this article is, it looks like it did. So there is a whole bunch of interesting explanations as to how the coronavirus works and why some of the ways in which it's communicable suggest it was manually um, spliced in or forced to do, become more communicable through this gain-of-function testing. Um, that's all too technical for me to go into now. There are interviews with a whole bunch of um, immunologists and virologists Um, experts talking about how this kind of work happens in labs all over the country. Um, And then there's just a a bunch of uh, situational uh, uh, details which seem to suggest that this thing came from the lab. One of which was that the virus that came out of the bat, the bat uh, virus was taken from a mine shaft, as it mentioned, and that was nowhere near Wuhan. The virus, however, was being stored in a lab in Wuhan and worked upon by um, scientists there. So either this bat virus um, tra- travelled thousands of kilometres to the wet market where it was discovered, or somehow it got out from the lab in the city where it was happening. The uh, initial statement from a whole bunch of biologists and scientists was that they didn't believe there was a laboratory-based scenario plausible. They thought it was natural that this thing could evolve. Um, It's just a complete coincidence. But the article goes into some detail as to the number of human errors that labs playing around with these viruses have done previously. We know that 
uh, scientists have been bitten by mice, infected mice, just by accident. They've dropped beakers. They've had broken like uh, waste pipes, which leak stuff into um, waterways. This is all over the world. The chance of human error causing problems is actually higher than you'd think. And when you look at the geographic question, the market, which was closed and decontaminated by Chinese officials on the 1st of January, uh, this article posits was an amplifying hub, but not the source of the outbreak. According to several studies by Chinese scientists, 45% of the earliest COVID-19 sufferers had no link to the market whatsoever. So, uh, effectively, uh, like I said, I encourage everyone to go off and read this because it goes into some detail. I don't know 100% whether or not I agree with this or not, but I think it is interesting to put forward the question that this might have actually emerged from a lab, but due to the amount of time that has elapsed, we may never know the answer. Um, it could have been from experimentation on a bat virus that got out of control. Yeah, I. so I, I know nothing about this stuff, but there's a couple of things that I do know. And one of them is that it is it seems like a major coincidence that one of the... I mean, Wuhan's a big city, but it did seem like a major coincidence that one of the viral labs, uh, one of the biggest viral labs in China is in Wuhan, for one thing. And the other thing is... I, I, chi the Chinese government is actively covering up, uh, from the start, has been actively covering up this virus... Uh, they're also at the moment they're blocking um, World Health Health Organization officials from coming in to complete their investigation or to continue their investigation in Wuhan. Yeah. So there's that. We we know that the Chinese government is is not being forthright with this stuff. So why would we why would we believe this? And also to to your other point there about um, it being you know considered racist to question, I. I under I think that's true. People do view had, did view this as as a somewhat it was, it racist was the China thing to, virus, right? That was the Trump thing, right? But it, I mean, it, Trump maybe accelerated the racism there, and I think it was wrong to call it the China virus. But I also do feel like, I mean, we need to. If China did let this, I mean, accidentally or whatever, let this out and then cover it up, it is their fault. It's not racist to assign blame to a people. It's That's not racist. It's racist to attribute, it's racist to generalize and then call everyone who's who looks Chinese, you know, blame them for, for the coronavirus. That's racist. But calling out China for you know, handling this in the worst possible way and basically and basically shutting down the entire world, that's not racist. And we should be investigating that. And yeah. that's that's and the they, World Health Organization has tried, you know, they they've there've been a couple of um, explorations of this, but the the Chinese government's also restricted their own scholars and scientists from looking into the origin of the COVID two. Of course um, they they are a corrupt do you think America's bad? China is so much worse than America yeah. at the moment. Yeah, they're crooks. They're di they're, they're they're run by a dictatorship. One hundred really like yeah, one hundred percent. They're killing people. They're like Russia. They kill people who oppose the government. They're fucked over there. Yeah, uh, it is. Uh, like I said, uh, uh, it's a little bit of an unfortunate science news in the sense that the the depth of the argument is such that it, it's I can't do a good job explaining it on the podcast. Um, nor no, would I, think, I try I think to, it's but good, I think that, that you that it's we we keep this in the conversation. We don't just forget the uh, the possible avenues, and like you said, we yeah. may never know because they may never let us fully understand all the information. But we could keep it yeah. in the conversation. The the article makes the, the distinction. It says like this is not a conspiracy theory. It's just a theory. Yeah. It, it's not proven. It could be that it came about from animal origins. There is a, a, a possible route that way. It's just that there are enough questions about the scientific, you know, combination of um, these viruses, and it's 
poses the reasonable question that it may have been from a lab, from a lab accident. And I mean, frankly, if it was your fault, are you going to come forward? (laughs) You could. It's it's, this. This is not something that anyone would want on their conscience, right? Like, hey, I'd cover it up, Jono. If you're listening, I'd cover it up too. It's all cool, man. We all don't want the blame, but it is way more plausible on paper that it came from a viral lab than, you know, a guy had a threesome with a bat and a pangolin at a market. I mean... Yeah. It is fascinating purely for the semi-technical explanation of the origins of the virus and the way in which it was spread and it's the, the things that it matches and they recognize in it. I do encourage it. Put aside a bit of time. Have a read. Um, let us know what you think. Um, China. China. If you got anything left, I got one last thing. Nah, you go. Oh, yours, baby. I think it's, oh, it's that time. It's been a little while, but I think everyone has been clamoring. It's 2021, and they've been saying, when are we going to get another episode oh of Chip Chat? Because am I meant to be this? I don't have any chippies. So, sorry, can you just be, can you just be quiet? So I thought it started hailing there really suddenly. Um, uh, what I, I was saying any... is that it's time for another episode of Chip Chat, and I have brought something pretty special to the table. Oh my god, that looks good, dude. Okay, this is I mean, a looks terrible, but... kettle chip champagne, uh, special edition. It is prosecco with pink peppercorn flavored. You will see a very is classy. Thinking of these chips, I. I would love, you know, it'd be a great Vice interview. It would be just like the people that come up with these stupid kettle chip ideas. I mean, most of them are actually pretty good, aren't they? Let's be real. <laughs> most of them are pretty good. But who came up with Prosecco? I, I, Here's the I one. cannot got, wait to see what this tastes like. I've got multiple questions here. First one is, yeah, on the front, I don't know that they've said this on any other uh, chip packet I've ever read. There's a picture of uh, a couple of glasses of Prosecco. Uh, There's some pink peppercorns. And then there's pictures of chips, as you'd expect. And in very small white print underneath the chips, it says, product shown, not actual size. (laughs) I don't know whether they're they're bundling the glasses in or whether they think that these chips are not going to be the size of these chips. Because I've eaten chips this size. I don't know why they're concerned that it's not going to match expectations. I'm actually glad. I'm actually glad that they did. Okay, I, I, the, uh, I was hoping that the little fine print would be "Do not drive, uh, drink, drink and chip responsibly" or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, no, that's much more sensible. Um, on the descriptor, it says, uh, "Find our special edition prosecco with pink peppercorns chips." No, nope. for our special edition prosecco with pink peppercorns chips, we use the delicious effervescent flavor of prosecco with the delicate touch of pink peppercorns. Okay. It's a bit more effort at the chip, at the kettle chip company though. We think it's worth it. That's that comma shouldn't be there. Okay, let us. Oh, I want to smell it too. But oh, can't. that first smell is. Oh, that's smell good. not. That's not. Ultimately I want to smell. Okay. Look at this. Okay, here we go. Take a screenshot of this, Michael, because. This is the this is the chip that they're so concerned about. Does not recognize does not represent the actual size of chips. Look at this. It is exactly the size That's exactly of the chips. Exactly the size. Why were they so concerned? I'm glad. Maybe they're talking about the glass of prosecco. Okay, maybe, but there's no glasses in here. Or maybe that's the point. They're so much smaller. I should be more careful. <laughs> um, okay. First impression. Wait, can you smell. Smell. Describe the smell. The smell. <sighs> It's got quite a musty smell. It smells. It smells a I little bit bacony. Oh. It smells sort of savory. It's got like an umami sort of taste to it. You know. What this, does what does does it have like an out? Can you smell like any alcoholic kind of? You no. Know, kind of. No, I don't. It does remind me of something, but I can't think of what it is. I don't have a very good sense of smell. I'm sorry, but I can tell you that it's got pink flecks all over it, which I'm assuming is the pink peppercorns. Um, the fuck's a pink peppercorn? It's a peppercorn that's gone pink. I don't know. I think it's I was time always to... told that peppercorns don't exist. 
<laughs> this is so stupid. It's All right, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to put this in my mouth. Make sure you get right close to the mic there. Oh, you look perplexed. You look intrigued. You don't look angry, though. Wow. Hmm. Oh, he's gone in for another chip. He doesn't look entirely disappointed, which he has in the past. He looks curious, like the first time I tried vanilla Coke. Well, that, that's not what I thought that would taste like. Here's the first thing that I've realized. Please I don't know what Prosecco tastes detail. like. <laughs> okay. So I don't know, don't know how authentic a Prosecco flavor this is when I don't, I don't recognize it. Here's the uh -huh. second thing. Very vinegary. Oh yeah, Prosecco got like a vinegary. it's got a tartness, which I was not prepared for. Mm. Uh, the um, Do you okay. Yeah, it's it's a very Go crispy chip. Okay. Go for another crisp. Okay. We've got time. <laughs> I feel like I can. Taste nah. It you know what? No, I don't think so. Really? I think wow. I'm I think I'm okay with not eating that. The uh the chip itself, nicely crunchy, very thin. I think you could probably hear on the microphone there was a little bit of that, that crispy kind of crunch, which is very satisfying to bite into. It came through, yeah. But the uh the aftertaste is just very tart. It's sort of like imagine a light and tangy, except okay. you get no sweetness at the end you know oh. there's no there's no um you know I, I like to think of the light and tangy as a bit of a push and pull you get the tangy but then you get the light you know it's it's like mm. a combination a nice balance this one here, light and tangy in years mm, this one here is it's all tang and there's no lightness it is just wow. it's just a sour aftertaste gross and i like a bit of peppercorn i, I don't mind a, a salt and vinegar but together this one is not this is not really doing it for me. I am going to have another, but I yeah. don't really like it. Hey, next time, uh, don't eat all, all those chips. Next time you send uh, Emma a Christmas card, put one of those in there for me. Mm. For me to taste. I do kind of want you to taste them, so maybe I will. I'll go out and buy some. Mm. Not tonight. Ugh. Your, your expressions are getting noticeably more aggressive. <laughs> I think it's it's fine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I could watch you do that all day, really. <laughs> this is, that this is game. very pleasant that's to me. That's a two-person that, game. That's, not, that's, that's my not, screensaver. That's not, a, um, that's not a party game. That's a two-person game where just you and I... Make faces at each other in an audio podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I am recording, so it'll probably <laughs> probably make the Instagram. That's good. 